today I'm going to use a couple of props if you have any sort of light weight and today I'm using a water bottle or maybe a can of soup that would be fine just have it nearby we'll work our rotator cuff later um, if you feel better with a pillow behind your head when you're performing the exercises by all means grab yourself a small pillow and the last thing I'm going to use today is just a, a rubber ball or tennis ball and we're going to start with a pec release everything in our lives in front and in the center we tend to come forward during the day which uh, gives us that tendency of forward head posture and, and that slouching that we want to discourage and when that happens these muscles on the front of our body tend to the shoulders roll in they get really tight so this is just a nice release or massage for the pec muscles on the front of our body to help them relax we're going to start with the tennis ball in one arm take it out to the side a little lower than shoulder height and just bring it right into the chest the other hands right on top and we're going to press in gently to feel a little bit of crankiness and then just start with some small circles giving yourself a little massage and let's go the other direction with those circles should feel a little bit cranky here if you don't have the right spot just play around with it might be a little bit lower you'll feel it when you hit the right spot again it's just a little might be a little bit touchy there and now just press in and out towards the underarm and back press in out towards your elbow and release let's go two more press in and out and very last one perfect okay let's do the other side so switch arms out to the side a little lower than the shoulder just bring it right into your chest other hand on top and we're going to press in and out towards the underarm and back and let's go three more and release two more and release for your last one perfect and now a few little circles let's go four three find those cranky spots two more and very last one let's reverse those circles three and two and one good job okay we'll put the ball aside and now we can lay down so when we lay down, I just want you to notice a couple of things. If you feel like your head's tipping back, your chin's coming up and your neck's long, make sure you tuck the chin in, look down at the knees. If that's not comfortable, that's when the pillow might come in. If you feel like you're straining your neck at all, just put a small pillow behind your neck so that you don't have that lengthening or strain in the front of your neck. And then from here, we just want to keep that double chin. So we bring your gaze down to the top of the knees and then gently press your head into the mat or into the pillow, just working those extensor muscles. Again, we're thinking about posture today and relax. And again, low grade press with the head into the mat and release. Let's go one more time, press, and then just gently hold it there. We're going to take the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Imagine somebody has your wrists and they pull them up, 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 and then they let go. And the tips of your shoulders are nice and flat. Push them into the mat, and then let your arms come out to the side like an airplane. Okay, when we're here, we're going to press the hands into the floor. Keep that low grade press with your head and just open up through the front of the chest, keeping the top or bottom ribs as heavy as you can. And relax. Again, let's just press the arms into the floor. If it hurts to have them up here in an airplane, find a happy place. So if you need to go lower towards your feet, make sure you do that. And then from here, we're going to make some snow angels. In a perfect world, the hands can stay near to the floor, but if you need to take them a little higher for that to be comfortable, we're going to let the arms come up to wherever that place is that your arms can comfortably go, and then down again. So ribs stay heavy as we let the arms come overhead. And down. And very last time, we're going to let the hands come overhead 
And then when you come overhead, we're going to turn the little baby fingers up to the ceiling and then just press the thumbs into the floor, keeping the ribs as heavy as you can. Low grade press with the head still. And now let's reach the right arm up a little higher, like there's something just out of reach. Really stretch, stretch, stretch. Open those big muscles of your back. And switch. The other arm comes up way up. We're reaching something just out of grass. Pick some apples. And switch. Let's go one more on each side. Up, 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 up. And relax and switch. Perfect. And then from here, we're going to just that movement like we're taking our shirt off, up and around. Just opening and warming up those shoulders. We've got two more. And then very last one. Well done. Let's take the arms right down to the side. Palms on the floor, thumbs closest to your bottom. And we're going to slide the hands down towards the feet just to get all that tension out of our neck and shoulders. And then from here, we're going to walk the feet in towards the hands. First exercise we're going to do today is some bridging. Bridging is really important for your low back, but the most important aspect of bridging is just really squeezing the glutes. So tighten, tighten up through the buttocks and release. And let's squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You should feel your lower abs start to tighten up and relax. Let's go one more time. Squeeze the glutes. Hold it there, a little energy in your big toe so that you're not, if you press into your heel, it's gonna go right up the back of your leg. So really space those toes out and press. Squeeze the glutes, big breath in, exhale. Let the hips come up to wherever your comfort zone is. And while you're here, just low grade press with the head, widen out through the shoulders, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the glutes. Hold it there for four and three and two. And let's just tap the bottom down to the mat. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the glutes. And up we go again. We're going to hold it there. Nice wide shoulders. Four, three, two, and down. Two more. Squeeze energy in the toes as we lift and hold. Shoulders are wide. Four, three, two, and down. Very last one. Squeeze, lift, and hold. Four, three, two, and down. Nice work. From here, we're just going to bring one leg in. Float it up to the ceiling like you're sitting in an invisible chair. And now bring it in far enough towards your shoulders that you really feel your rib cage flatten onto the mat. And then when you're here, tighten up the core. So tighten up. Imagine somebody's going to poke you. So get that core engaged. And keep the ribs as heavy as you can as you point the toe and start to lower that leg down towards the floor. So the ribs are heavy, heavy, heavy. If there's some point that you feel like your back's arching, that's where you stop. It's not about touching the floor. It's about seeing where you can go and stay strong through your core. If that's okay, go out a little bit further. So we're going to lengthen that leg out just to wherever the point is that it's tough to do this, but it's easy to do. There's no strain on your back. And only if that's okay. If that's hard, that's your exercise. But if that's okay, try to lift your opposite hand up, touch the knee. And as you extend that foot out, raise the arm overhead, keeping the ribs heavy, heavy, heavy. And yeah. The further away you take the foot from your bottom, the harder the exercise is going to be. So you judge where to go. Reach and tap. Let's go three more. Reach and tap. Two more. And nice and heavy through the ribs for that very last one. Perfect. Good job. Just going to let that leg lower to the floor, heavy through the ribs, and switch sides. So the other leg comes up like we're sitting in the invisible chair. Draw the knee in towards your shoulder until your ribs are heavy, and then tighten up or cinch the waist. From here, we're going to keep the bottom ribs heavy, point the toe, and start to lower that leg down towards the floor. And up. Make sure you're breathing. 
if that's okay, the foot just goes a little further away. Find that stabilization point where it's tough to do the exercise, a little bit challenging, but you can still keep the ribs heavy. And if that's all right, we're going to take the opposite hand up and touch your knee. Keep the ribs heavy as we extend overhead. And in. Let's go four more. And up. Three more. Heavy through the ribs. Nice deep breathing. Two more. And very last one. Well done. Let's bring the other knee up to meet and greet. Now we're going to hold it here. Ribs are heavy and just give it a little shake. Release that low back. And when you're ready, take your arms all the way out to the side. Now imagine you're holding a $100 bill between your knees. Big squeeze on the inner thighs. And now great big breath in. We're going to let the knees fall to the right. When we do, we're going to keep that left shoulder as heavy as we can. If there's any point you feel like your shoulder is going to lift off, that's where you stop. Exhale and hold. And now, great big inhale. Let the knees just uh, roll over to the other side. When we go to the left, the right shoulder is as heavy as you can be, anchoring yourself to the floor. Press those hands into the floor. Exhale, hold. Big breath in, up and over. Exhale, hold. And very last one, up and over. Perfect, and back to the center. Now let's just hug the knees one more time, make some circles, just little gentle circles, but keeping the tailbone nice and heavy. We don't want to lift off. Now let's go the other way for three and two and one. Awesome. Okay, from here we'll bring the hands back down to the floor. Knees into your chest so your ribs are heavy. Press your heels together and open the knees up as much as you're comfortable. And close. And open. And close. And open. Press, press, press into the feet. Let's go four more. And open. Three more. And open. Two more. And open. So really working those deep set of glutes muscles that help protect your back. Perfect. Let's take a little rest. We're going to lower one foot and then the other. If you're finding that there's any strain on your low back when you're doing the exercises with your leg in the air, I'll give you a little tip that may help. If you do have that pillow nearby, just lift up into that bridge position one more time, tightening the glutes, and slide that pillow underneath your low back under the sacrum, that wide band on your low back. That might help release any tension in your low back. Let's go one more time. We're going to lift one leg up and then the other. And then tuck the knees in so that your ribs are flat to the floor. And this time we're going to start with some bicycles. So we're going to extend. Let's start with the right leg out nice and long. You can't reach the pedal. Reach, reach, reach. Lower it until you the point that you feel like it's hard to keep the ribs down. And then in. Same thing on the other side. So just reaching the long legs. Can't reach the pedal and in. And let's just keep going with that. Let's go eight. And seven. Make sure you breathe. Six and five. Four more. Three more. Two more. And very last one. Well done. Give your knees a little hug. Well, we're here. We're going to cross the ankles, widen the knees out. And we're just going to try to unweight the tailbone. So just lifting the tail slightly and letting it become heavy. Ribs stay heavy the whole time, drawing the knees in towards the shoulder and then lowering down to that point that it feels a little bit challenging. And up. And release. Let's go three.
three more. Two more. And very last one. Perfect. Uncross the ankles, but keep the feet or the knees nice and wide. Feet pressed together. And from here, we're, these are called frog geese. The knees are steered in towards the shoulder. And we keep pressing the feet and let the legs come out until they zip up so that you can't, hit, there's no space between your knees. And then draw the knees in towards the shoulder. It's going to be easier if you bring your feet up towards the ceiling. It's going to be a little harder the lower down your legs go. You decide that the indication of where we go is where we keep, where we can keep the ribs as heavy as we can and still stretch the legs out. So we never want to arch that back. The back stays nice and solid. Out and draw the knees in towards the shoulder. Let's go three more. One of my favorite exercises because we're not only uh, really waking up those low abs, we're really working the hips here because this is almost a squat position when we bring the knees in. It loosens those hips right up. Let's go two more. And very last one. Good job, give the knees a hug. And now we're going to lower one leg and then the other. Squeeze the glutes, lift the hips up, and we're going to turn over to the side. So just roll over to the side so that you're facing me. And when you're ready, we're going to, if you like, you can have the pillow under your head for some support. And if you're okay bringing your arm under the head, that's an option as well. To start with, we're going to do a double leg lift. So we're going to squeeze the inner thighs together, connect the heels and balls of the feet. Be strong here. Imagine somebody's going to give you a little gentle push on the shoulders and they can't push you over because you're strong here. Think about your feet being as far away from your head as you lift both legs up, working those muscles between the ribs and the hips on the side, relaxing the neck and down. Again, heels, balls of the feet together and lift. Hold it there. Four, relax the neck. Three, two, and down. Let's go three more. Up and release. Two more. Up and release. Very last one. Up and hold. Four, relax the neck. Three, inner inner thighs engaged for two very last one and down well done okay now that top foot imagine you can balance a book on it and then stay long through the waist this lift isn't very high just a few inches up and down press into the heel as you lift and down and three and down and four and down. Let's go four more. And release. Three more. You can rest whenever you need to. Two more. And very last one. Perfect. From here, point the toe nice and long. We're going to lift for three more. And two more. And last one, and now we've got three little circles. We're going to try to touch that bottom foot when we go around. Three, and two, and reverse. Let's go the other way. Four, and three, and two. Last one. Give that leg a hug. It's been working hard. And then when you're ready, we're going to slide that bottom knee into a bent position and stack everything up here. So imagine there's a wall behind you, your head, your bottom, and your feet would all be against that invisible wall. The hips and the belly button facing forward. We're going to squeeze the feet together and open the knees up again. So heels are pressing together and release. Let's go five more. And release. And four more. Making sure you stay nice and level through your hips, not letting your upper body roll. 
two more. And very last one. Perfecto. Okay, from here, if you have that water bottle nearby or you're lightweight, we're just going to take it right up to your belly. Elbows are glued to the side. The elbows, the hinge, and the forearms just opening up the door. And release. And now I'm going to give you a choice here as well. You can keep your knuckles facing the ceiling. Or if it's okay, when you get to the top, turn the thumb like you're trying to turn it towards the back wall. And then turn the palm and the knuckles are up to the ceiling to go down. So let's go three. If you want, turn the thumb back like you're hitchhiking. And in. And four. And release. Let's go four more. And release. Three more. And release. Two more. And release. On this last one, we're not going to turn the thumb. We're going to take the arm right up to the ceiling. So your fingers are facing me. Let the arm just settle into the socket. And then from here, we've got three circles. Just three. And two. And pause and reverse. Let's go the other way. Three. And two. And one. Good job. From here, we're going to dig a hole. So we're going to bring the thumb right down in front of the knee. And then we're going to turn the thumb up towards the ceiling and up towards the ear. And then thumb down towards the knee. Just scoop it up. And up. And three. And up. And four. We've just got two more to go. Two more. And very last one. Perfect. Okay, from here we're going to take the arm right out in front of our shoulder. Right down to the floor. And then only up to about shoulder height. So it's not a very high lift. And then down. And up. And three. These are sneaky. And up. And four. Let's go two more. And very last one. Perfect. Give that arm a rest. You can put the weight away. And from here, we're just going to let the bottom leg stretch right out. So it's as long as it can be. That top leg, you decide. It's a little easier if the leg's behind the body. A little harder if it's out in front. A little bit more of a stretch here. You can open it up into that figure four. The bottom foot, you really want to reach, reach, reach into the heels, pull the toes right back to your nose. And now think about this movement coming from your inner thigh. We don't want to be lifting from our feet. Think about the muscles that are working as we lift that leg up, relaxing the neck, and down. And two. And down. And three. And down. Let's go three more. And down. Two more. And down. And on the very last one, we're going to hold it up. And we're going to reach the toes right across the room, all five of them. And then press, press, press into the heels. So we're flexing and pointing. And flex. Relax the neck and point. Three more. And point. Two more. And point. Very last one. Point the toes nice and long. We've got three circles here. Three. And two. Pause here. Reverse that circle. Three. And two. And very last one. And relax. Well done. From here we're going to straighten both legs out and roll right onto your belly. This is a good place to have the pillow nearby to support the head. So give yourself a little bit of a double chin and just rest your forehead on that pillow. And now we're going to start by bringing our arms out to the side in that airplane position again. And now, even if through the front of the hips, pull the belly button in away from the mat, 
And we're going to start with snow angels again, just letting your arm go to wherever it's comfortable for you to go. Go up and then down towards your side. So work within that range of motion that's pain-free for you. And only if that's okay and you're not, it's not painful, then you can lift the hands off the floor. Same movement, coming up and down. Let's go two more. And down. And on the very last one, we're going to let the arms come down to our side, still palms to the floor. Slide your hands down until they're as close to the feet as they'll go. Get all that tension out of your neck. Okay, let, give yourself a little bit of a double chin. We're trying to stay looking at the flat floor of the mat as we lift up. So try not to crank that neck so you're looking in front of you. Big breath in. Just unweight the head from the pillow. Let the hands lift up, turn the thumbs away from your body and up towards the ceiling, opening and opening that chest. Four, three, two, and down. Really important exercise for posture. Big breath in, unweight your forehead. If it's okay, lift your hands, turn your thumbs away, hold it there. Four, three, two, and down. One more. Are you ready? Big breath in, decompress and lift. Turn the thumbs away, drive the fingers down to your heels, and down. And now let's bring our arms out to that airplane position one more time. From here we're going to lift the arms up, and lower. Now if that's okay, it's not painful, turn the thumbs up towards the ceiling to open the shoulders a little bit more. Just lifting, and lowering. Let's go four more. And down. Three more. And down. Just two more. And down. Very last one. And relax. Good job. Now we're going to transition to the other side, but first I'm going to have a big old lat stretch. So if you have that water bottle or your bowl nearby, whichever you like, we're just going to put it underneath one palm. If it hurts to be on your knees, you can just stand, or stand on a countertop and do this with your arms stretching out. Or you can put a little padding under your knees with that pillow. So whatever feels good for you. So all we're going to do is roll, roll, roll that water bottle away from your tailbone. And I want you to reach your roll it as far as you can. Pull your tailbone back away from your hands. So you're pushing and pulling, trying to create as much length as you can in those tight muscles of your back. When they're too tight, those big lat muscles, they can inhibit that overhead arm movement. And we don't want that. Relax, let's switch to the other side. Same movement, we're gonna roll, roll, roll away from your knees. And pull your tailbone back, 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 and stretch, pushing and pulling to create as much length as you can in those big muscles of your back. Nice deep, deep breathing. If you need to rest your head, feel free, whatever feels good. Ah, that should feel good. Okay, from here, let's bring your head over to the other side of the mat. That way you'll be facing me, and you'll be on your other side. So nice long body here. Remember the double leg lift. We're going to press the heels and balls of the feet together, either the pillow or the arm under your neck. Pull, draw the belly button in. Squeeze inner thighs as we lift both legs up, holding it there, relaxing the neck. Four, three, two, and down. Let's do that three more times. Just gonna lift and hold, hundred dollar bill in your, between your knees and heels and balls of the feet. And relax. Two more. Up and down. Very last one. Let's hold. Three, two, one, and release. Well done. These muscles are really neglected for for, uh, to help reduce back pain, but it's really important that we're strong in all, all aspects of our core, every direction. 
Now the top leg nice and long, pressing into the heel, balance that invisible book on it. Nice long waist as we lift and lower. And two. And down. And three. And release. We've got three more. And in. Two more. Almost there. Just one more. Rest if you need to. And now reach the toes right across the room. Oh, stretch those feet out. They've been stuck in shoes all week. Up we go. And down. And two. And down. And three. Let's go three more. Two more. Last one. Awesome. Let's go with those three little circles. Just touching the bottom foot as we come around. Two more. And pause and reverse the other way. Three. And two. Very last one. Ah, uh, give that leg a hug. It's been working hard. We're gonna bring up, draw the other knee up into that bent position and stack everything up like we're laying against that invisible wall behind us. Hips, belly buttons, keep them forward as we press the feet together and open the knees. And down. And two. And release. And three. Just three to go. Three more. And two more. And very last one. Oh, well done. Okay, from here we're just gonna bring or grab your water bottles or weights or soup cans. Glue the elbow to the side, open up that invisible door with your forearm and down. Totally optional if you want to add that hitchhiking movement, turning the thumb to the back wall and then knuckles to the ceiling. Let's go three and release. And three more and release. Two more and release. And on this very last one, we're going to open it up, lift the arm up to the ceiling, let the arm settle into your socket in three gentle circles. Three, and two, and reverse. Let's go the other way. Three, and two, and now we're going to dig that hole. The thumb comes down right in front of the knee, almost touching the top of your knees. Turn the thumb up and draw it up towards your ear. So down. Dig the little hole with the thumb and up we go. So we're almost drawing a little figure eight. Three. And three more. And two more. And very last one. Perfect. Okay, now the knuckle or the water bottles facing me the knuckles are facing the back wall we're going to bring the arms straight down in front of the shoulder right to the mat and then just up to shoulder height and down and up and three and up just three more we're almost there rest if you need to or if you feel any sort of strain two more and very last one Oh, good job. You can put that bottle away now. We've got one more leg exercise. We're going to lengthen that bottom leg out. Top leg, you decide behind or in front. If it's in front, try to work that figure four stretch. Open that knee up. Bottom foot's nice and flat as we use the inner thigh to lift, relaxing the neck and lower. And two. And down. And three. And down. Let's go three more. We're almost there. Just two more. And on the very last one, we're going to hold it up and then point the toes right across the room and press into the heels. And reach the toes and press into the heels. And three. And press. Two. On the last one, point, point, point the toes. Three little circles. We're almost there. Two and reverse inner thighs are really important for knee health if your inner thighs are weak 
the knees don't quite line up right and relax good job okay we're almost finished now we're going to roll right onto our backs and if you need that pillow behind your head by all means put it there for a little bit of support we're going to stretch it out now. Well done today. Good work. We're going to bring that knee right up to the chest. Give it a great big old hug tight, as tight as you can into the chest. And then while you're here, pull the toes right back to your nose. And then keeping that hug behind your knee, so hug it as tight as you can. Straighten that leg out as straight as it will go. Nice, deep, deep, deep breathing. It'll never be perfectly straight, and that's okay. We're really trying to stretch the knee side of that hamstring. It's an area that's harder to stretch, and it's where we tend to have more injuries. So keeping that uh, knee hug tight to your chest is important to execute this stretch properly. Most important, just breathe, breathe, breathe. You want to hold it long enough to give it some time to relax. Couple more deep breaths, drawing the air right down to where you feel any sort of tension. Perfect, let go of that leg, give it a shake, loosen it up. And now try to think of the back of your hips and stay as level as you can as you point the toe and we're making three circles. Circles can be as big as you like as long as you feel like the back of your hips are nice and stable. Let's go the other direction, three. So all we're doing here is stirring that synovial fluid into the hip. So the femur is stirring into that hip where all that synovial fluid is and helping lubricate that joint. So like a little WD-40 for the hips. And from here we're going to cross over into that figure four position. Try to widen out through your knee as much as you can and open up the hips. And relax. Let's do that again. Just open it up. And now, if you can unweight this foot, just stay here and work this stretch. But if it's okay to lift that foot up, you'll go a little deeper into the stretch. Widen out through your chest and shoulders. And breathe. Nice, deep, deep breaths. Try to draw that breath into the back of your ribs, expanding through your rib cage. Deep exhales. Perfect, and then with control down, we're just going to switch legs. So the other knee into the chest, hug behind the knee as tight as you can, draw it into the chest, pull the toes back to lengthen through the back of your legs, and then lengthen that leg out as much as you can. Deep, deep, deep breaths. Big breaths. Try to exhale, deep, deep, deep breathing. Ah, so we think happy thoughts. I'm looking at the window and it's snowing in May. What the heck? Ah, the sun will be here soon. Don't you worry. Lengthen that leg right out. Big shake. And now level out through the back of your hips as you draw those three circles with your big toe on the ceiling. Staying as level as you can. Now try not to let those hips rock around. And then same thing on the other side. Three. And two. Last one. Cross the legs. Widen up through your knee as much as it will go. And relax. Let's go one more time. Open, open, open that hip. See how far you can go comfortably. And totally optional if you feel like you can unweight that other foot and draw it into you draw your knee in towards your chest. And when you get here, all you have to do is breathe. Think about widening it through your shoulders, breathing into the back of your ribs. Deep, deep, deep breaths. Nice deep exhalations. Hmm. And one more time. Deep, deep, deep breath. And when you're ready, we're going to lower it down with control. Now, it can be helpful to grab hold of that leg to help you come up to seated. 
And when you get here, we'll finish with a final breath. Just a deep breath all the way up. We're going to push the hands up to the ceiling. Try to lift right up at your hands. Reach for the sky. And come on down. Take a bow. Thanks for joining me today for Pilates. It's been a pleasure.